Remy already. Uh, and Remy will talk about Proxy 2.0, uh, which uh, is also in the abstract. I'll, I'll just let you get on for it. Keep talking. Hello. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, the, the proxy 2.0 is a kind of pretext. I mean, um, uh, there, is, there is two, um, only two ideas on, on, on this talk. So the first one is just that Java long reflect proxy is something of the past and we should move on and uh, provide a new API in, let's say, Java 9 or Java 10. And uh, the second one is, uh, if, if I want to implement mon, uh, uh, more modern uh, proxy API, there is something which is fun, which is, it's not that easy. And this is a journey to how to uh, implement this. So uh, it's me. Uh, I am an academic. Uh, I'm also a, a GCP expert for uh, Invoke Dynamic, Lambda, and currently modules, Jigsaw. Uh, let's say just uh, EOT part. <laughs> it's my main uh, concern. And um, th the second concern is just um, release it. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm a Java dev, so uh, um, I'm a, I am a developer of ESM, OpenGDK, a lot of uh, um, open source projects used mainly by me. <laughs> 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 so uh, I have to have a slide. I like your lawyers. Yes. <laughs> so why? Why proxy 2.0? Um, basically, uh, everybody uses proxies. Sometimes it's hidden, but most Java frameworks use proxies. Spring, Hibernate, Wild. Wild is a CDI implementation of Red Hat. Uh, GDK use proxy internally for better than those proxies that nobody use, I know. And for annotation support, uh, every annotation is just a Java long refract proxy, the value of an annotation. And dynamically typed language use proxy to, well, some of them use proxy um, just to uh, expose some part of the language to Java. Basically, you have your language and you want to access, gem, uh, uh, access it from Java. For that, you, you need a, a proxy. And um, one thing is uh, uh, with proxy 2.0 is try to bridge the invoke dynamic world, the world uh, where you, you can generate code and uh, from the world where you are in Java and you can't generate code, you can't use Invoke Dynamic. So um, you don't need a better proxy if we had a way um, to generate Invoke Dynamic in Java. If we have a, a way to uh, generate invoke dynamic in Java, I mean, it's done. We don't need proxies at all. But it seems that um, <laughs> having invoke dynamic in Java is uh, like a, a wet dream, at least for me. Well, Brian and John wrote some very small like, code generation package four years ago and then left it to die its open source death, so it's been tried. So. Yes. <laughs> so, 
how Tavalang reflect proxy words uh, works. So it, it works like a kind of multiplexer. You have your method, uh, you want this proxy, it will go in one invocation handler, one method, all, all the calls goes in one method, and inside it, you have it as a javalang reflect method. And basically, the javalang reflect method is two things. It's something that reify uh, the, the, the method as itself. You, you can see the annotation, you can see the type parameters, and so on. And it's also something that you can use to call the method. So you use the very same object for the two, for the two purposes, for the two meanings. And so here, you can do an invoke and goes to the real implementation. Obviously, it's slow because here you have type pollution. In fact, this is not slow. This is awfully slow. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, every um, Java framework used currently use proxies. But there is a trick. They don't use Javalong Reflect Proxy. Every everyone, uh, uh, I mean, every framework comes with uh, uh, a way to generate proxies. Uh, I mean, a new way. Every framework. <laughs> <laughs> so they use ESM, Java Assist, BCL, and so on. And if you take a look to the code, <laughs> it's really awful. And most of the time, uh, it's um, uh, for the VM. It works on s a small example, but it doesn't work at scale. Um, the we have our own in JRuby too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so. so uh, Basically, why Javalong Reflex Proxy is slow is uh, you have the profile pollution. The, uh, given the way the interface is done, you have mandatory boxing of the parameter and of the arguments. And you have two objects. You have the proxy object and you have the handler object, which means that you also pay the, the allocation twice and the um, you have um, pointers and pointers and pointers and so on each time you call something. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, it's worse than that, which, which is uh, the currently the Javalong Reflect Proxy doesn't support default methods. <laughs> I mean, at all. You, you, uh, you can call a default method from a, a Javalong Reflect proxy. I have posted the code on the MLVM list, and I think there is a hack in the code to bypass the security. Thanks. I mean, you can't write, actu actually, you can't write a code, uh, a secure code, that, that is able inside uh, inside your handler, your Javalong Reflect proxy handler, to call a default method. The default method will be always override by the proxy. And this is exactly the same problem with the Javalong uh, object method, to string, hash code, and so on. You have to, f uh, to provide an implementation of this method even if you don't want which is a big flow, in my opinion. So um, let's start with a new proxy, a new API, a new word. So proxy 2.0, uh, the ID is it's exactly the same ID that uh, invoked dynamic. Uh, you want to separate the linking from the runtime call. You want to do the linking once. You want to ask the user Please do the linking for this method. And after at runtime, always use uh, method handles. So basically, uh, the proxy handler is not something that will be called at each 
call, it will be called once when you do some linking. The first time you will call a method, uh, the first time a user call a method of the proxy, it, yeah, the, the implementation will call the proxy handler and do the linking and the method handle or the call site exactly will be used each time after. So this is something like this. I have my proxy object, I have my handler object that describe how to do the linking and the first time the method is called, it will call the bootstrap method. Uh, it should remember something. And uh, I have a proxy context and basically the proxy context describe the method here and it returns a call site and it will use the call site everywhere. Um, uh, the, the, the main uh, um, idea here is if you do this, you are exactly in the same world as invoke dynamic for a dynamic, uh, dynamically typed language, which means that you can reuse all the code you already have. So this is the part that you can see in Java, and this is the part where you can use the uh, dynamic runtime of your language. And you just bring them together. So just some kind of live coding, just to see how it works in, if it works. Um, so it's just something like this. It's just a hello world for a proxy. So I have an interface. I can put code in an interface now. So it's really cool. <laughs> I have an interface just with one method. It will, I just want to proxy this interface. So I will use proxy proxy2.create anonymous proxy factory. Whoa. <laughs> What's this? Um, uh, <laughs> one problem of Java Long Reflect Proxy is that the caching is done by the uh, Java Long Reflect Proxy implementation. And this is stupid. Usually, uh, the user has more information. So basically, the library don't do any caching. If you want to do the caching, do it. Uh, you, you can use a class value or something like this for doing the caching if you want. So basically, what the proxy uh, as a library return is not a proxy, but a proxy factory, basically a constructor of proxy. So here you send your interface and you provide the bootstrap method. The bootstrap method is called with a context, and in the context you have two information. You have the method, which is the method to implement. It's the method of the interface. So you can uh, call get annotation and do things like this. And you have the type. And the type is the type uh, of the call site inside the proxy. And basically, I have re-implemented the invoke binder interface. Um, I'm just sorry. I have implemented this uh, in the train. Just forget, <laughs> completely f uh, forgetting that it was already existing. <laughs> so uh, it's a method builder, and you pass the type, you drop the first parameter. Uh, the first parameter, by, by convention, the, uh, the call site, uh, at the call site, you first uh, pass the proxy as first argument. Here, I don't need the proxy object, so I just drop it. And then I call the method, uh, I don't remember exactly what I'm calling, or oh, just concat on string. And so, here I will use my factory to create a proxy, and I can call my proxy with two parameters, it should concatenate the two. So I will hit run and hope. It seems to work, and you can see the 
bootstrap information, first you can see that the bootstrap method is called once. It's called, it's called sorry, once. So you have the, uh, the method with all the information and you have the type. Uh, you can see the, 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 uh, it's the method type of the call site. You can see the first uh, object is the proxy object and you have the agreement after. Well, just a small, uh, a small hello world. Let's go to something, oh, I'm sorry, more fun. Um, this is how to do a delegation proxy that will do nothing, just delegating the thing. What I, what I want is just something that take a print stream as parameter and call it. So basically I want to create a proxy that take a print stream and just call print on, on the print stream. So I need to store the print stream inside the proxy. I don't want two objects, I just want one. So Basically, the idea is just to declare all the fields you want. You just declare the class of all the fields you want. And automatically, these fields are loaded after the proxy name, which means that for the call site, now uh, I have a call site that will load the proxy object, load all the fields, load all the parameters, all the arguments. Um, this is uh, the, 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 the real handler, so I can say if uh, a field is mutable of or not. I need something like this. I can override a method or not. Here I say if the proxy will override a method or not, this method override is called for, uh, 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 is not called for abstract methods. It's called if there is an implementation. Basically, it's called for default method and uh, method of uh, Java long object. It's called every time? No, once. once. So if I Everything I is done once. If I override it later, it would, it would still not dispatch from mine. Yes. If, if, uh, if you want to override it later, you, you have to override it and just uh, do something that do nothing. Okay. <laughs> and then China. Yeah. Yes, basically, uh, <laughs> yes, to implement this, I need to spin bytecodes. My hope is that I'm able to spin bytecodes correctly. And, <laughs> and the overhead of installing that class you generate the bytecode in. I will answer to, to your question later. Let's, let's see. So it's just, just a simple example. Here, um, um, so basically, uh, here I use the binder of, um, of Charles, just it works exactly the same way. And if I run it, you can see hello proxy, which is, up, oh, sorry, up. Oh which is output on system.out. And then you can do interception, because basically uh, for our frameworks, they use proxy to do interception. So it's just a simple uh, um, interception. Here uh, I have my proxy. It's a real proxy, so I have exactly the same interface, I have exactly the same interface for my proxy and for the, uh, the object I will delegate to. And um, here you see something which is really fun, which is you can uh, specify, uh, basically I, have, uh, I will create a method handle and 
this methodontal will call another methodontal before the first one. So here I will do the interception before calling the, the real uh, implementation. So here my implementation is just a lambda and my intercept method just does a printout, a system that print out printer line, which is not something that here you can see that the code is intercepted. Before, so something you can do is something really fun, which right. is Um, yeah, it's it, it's a method builder. It's not. Uh, yes, and the whole um, method builder is is uh, implemented with lambda, so it's just one file and not how many files do we have? <laughs> uh, okay, so basically, if in my interceptor, I just throw an exception. You will see something like this. You see the main, you see intercept. You see no proxy at all. Proxies are fully transparent. Oh, no, no, you don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> I want that. I want to be able to debug um, something that run on Spring without having a, a giant stack trace. Do a load. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I uh, there is no point to showing something on a stack trace that you you can't uh, manipulate. I mean. There is no point to showing uh, a stack frame which is uh, generated bytecode, or you can't debug that thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think that you're lying now to the people who are debugging. And you can't say that they can't debug that. You don't know what they need in the field, so you need to give it to them. Yes, uh, it's because what you are, uh, you are debugging is, uh, some, um, is something which is complex. I mean, the generated code uh, generated by uh, current frameworks is really complex. But in this case, it's just something that do a delegation. It basically calls uh, call invoke dynamic. That's all. There is no thing to really debug. <laughs> on, the, on the field into an unknown application and they're using these things and I don't know about it because it's not showing up in any of the tooling that I'm using to debug the situation. I think that's a problem. Well, mm. the field is that like lambda forms don't show up in normal traces necessarily, but if you do a full dump, you can get it. Yeah, it's, that's, that's it's for users. The reason I wince about it is um, you need at least one stack frame to witness to the presence of that um, of that module if you want any kind of access checking that is sensitive to the presence of the module. Yeah. The, the, so the stack walking um, permission checker uh, needs to see something to witness. There's yes. Uh, uh, I, I will continue. I will explain how to not have um, <laughs> something in the middle of your. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, it was working. <laughs> so, what is a proxy? Um, uh, it acts as a linker. 
So the override method is called just once uh, to ask if uh, uh, um, the implementer of the proxy prefers the default implementation, the ones that come from JavaLang object or a default method, or want to implement its own method. And the bootstrap method just do the linking. Fields are stored inside the proxy. You have, you have only one object, not two objects. And you have a, uh, um, uh, a method that will take a description of the field. And basically, the class is generated using ASM. It uses define anonymous class. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. Uh, now we are uh, in the uh, oops part of the talk. Um, uh, it's because uh, you want to implement uh, private interface. I mean, interface that are only visible from some part of the code. <laughs> Uh, so basically, the host class of define anonymous class is the interface, so you can implement a class that will see the interface. Obviously, it's a big security oops, because now I'm able to implement any interface of anyone. So the create anonymous proxy factory takes a lookup as parameter and check that the interface is visible from the lookup object. If the interface is not visible from the lookup object. We need more API on lookup to do that. Lookup.find class. Mm. Yeah. It should be better. Um, so basically, I use define anonymous class just because of this uh, API. I want this API. It has some nice side effect let's call it that name there is no class <laughs> there is no class loader i mean you don't uh, uh, i mean class loader is something which is too hard <laughs> so if there is no class loader there is no problem <laughs> at least not this one and basically uh, it use uh, constant pool patching to inject the javalang reflect method. Yeah, uh, it's I use define anonymous classes. I use the fun things of define anonymous classes, which is a constant pool patching. I, I don't know if you know that there is this facility. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because of that. Because of that. Uh, I mean, um, what define anonymous class uh, uh, provide you is you can send the bytecode and you send a live object. And basically what you're saying is, I want uh, my bytecode and I want to patch the constant pool with some live object. Which is something which is really fun, uh, or perhaps even fundamental, if you implement a dynamically typed language, because you can stuff live object inside of your implementation. So basically, it works that way. You can only replace string constant, and you have two way, and you have two ways to load the constant. Load, yeah. it's patching. Either you use LDC or you use invoke dynamic, and you can patch the bootstrap uh, the, the constant argument of the bootstrap method. Uh, I clearly prefer this way because uh, the invoke dynamic um, um, uh, bootstrap method is called with um, uh, invoke, which means that I don't have to do any typing. It will be done exactly. I have no check cast and things like this. Yes, and it works. 
So, so this, this thing is a little safer, let's say like this. But, but you have so much fun in academia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but basically, uh, uh, um, currently, you can't have constant pool patching without the unsafe define anonymous class. And I think it's, it's something which is uh, um, um, bad. I want a defined class that allow constant pool patching without the, <laughs> without the anonymous class uh, from the VM point of view. <laughs> yeah. But you might need some better semantics for, for, for it. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think the real world should be let loose with, uh, this is a string. No, it's not. Um. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. If you stuck with Invoke Dynamic and not LDC, it's, it's a bit nicer. I mean, you don't see <laughs> the wall things. Uh, it's because uh, you, you can type your bootstrap method as you want, so it's okay. We have on paper a design for constant dynamic. Mm hmm, another dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, no, no, no. You, it, it, <laughs> I come to that just later. Uh, it's, it's. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but currently, uh, uh, you you can do the constant patching without uh, having the OS class and with doing the uh, verification. So basically, the constant pull patching operation is not unsafe. Just what I'm saying. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> we will talk about that. So basically, the proxy is totally hidden. So how to hide something? <laughs> I mean, if you generate bytecode, it's very easy. You just have some annotation, and you use the annotation name hidden. And basically, it's just hidden. So it's in lambda form things, and it's not fully true. You also need something. The annotation only works in your if you are in Java long invoke package. <laughs> but if you are in Java long invoke package, the class is not verified at all. Yes, but it, it's the opposite. I don't, I want verification. I mean, yeah, the problem is if I want to hide something. You can't really get verification. Yes. Minus X verify all. Minus X well, ver verify all will do. Yes. Um, yes. Huh. Yeah. Um. Slows everything down. But <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, uh, one. Uh, uh, advantage of uh, being in Java long invoke package is that you can also have force in line. So uh, the, the, the proxy method is always in line. Somebody broke into my house and drank all my booze. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
But there is still a problem, which is because the generated class is in Java lang invoke, I can't access to the proxy handler because the proxy handler is loaded by a class loader, not by the, um, I don't know how you call it, the null class loader. Um, so the infamous no class def found error. No. 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 No no idea how to to do that? No? Yeah, something like basically the proc uh, uh, the proxy handler is a class, but uh, it's not uh, something which uh, I can use it, but I can create a method handle on the proxy handler uh, uh, dot invoke, and with this method handle, I can inject this method handle using the constant pool patching yep. <laughs> to bypass the security. <laughs> so basically, just inject proxy handler dot bootstrap as a, a constant. I, I guess if you say constant pool patching one more time, you're not going to live outside. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if the VM summits stays at the VM? Server? Um, so th that's why it works. Uh, so as I said, I have uh, rewritten, uh, rewritten, uh, re I have written another uh, invoke binder <laughs> class um, for two two purposes. One is um, I have before and after that take lambdas, and lambdas are always fun. And the other one is something which is um, uh, currently uh, you have a problem with lambda forms and fine virtual. It's exactly the same problem I have posted on the uh, ML uh, VM uh, list, which is if there is no inlining, you lose the. Uh, uh, the uh, there will be no um, um, uh, vtable call. In that case, uh, the, the current implementation will push uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the method handle on the stack and call it with uh, invoke basic or something like this. Mm -hmm. But it's, so it's just a kind of a patch because I need it. Yeah, we just discussed about that uh, ten minutes ago. Uh, so I have rolled my only lining cache to solve that <laughs> that problem. <laughs> uh, I have a problem with the inlining cache, which is the fallback method of the inlining cache is visible from the user point of view. So my proxy is not totally hidden anymore. Uh, this is uh, so basically an, uh, an inlining cache. Uh, uh, the, the problem is um, y uh, y you need something that uh, sniff the first argument and then insert a guard with test when you see uh, a class after. So you basically you use as collector to collect all arguments, but uh, and then call uh, invoke with argument. Uh, this is only for the first time you call the things. But you will see the, uh, the fallback method inside the stack trace. And I don't want to see anything <laughs> on the stack trace, no proxy. So the solution is tail call. yes, <laughs> exactly. The real solution is to have tail call. And how to do tail call? <laughs> Fold arguments plus exact invoker will do the job. So you have a way to do a kind of kind of tail call currently, which is to use fold argument and exact invoker. It works that way, basically, 
you return a method under, so your fallback method will return a method under, and it will be fold as first argument of the exact invoker. Yay! <laughs> it works, and, and it's a better way to implement an inlining cache. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's a kind of tail call. It's not a real tail call. It's also solve uh, a security issue that was raised by uh, Euron, as a, as a groovy implementer, uh, which is um, um, if you use uh, if you don't use invoke with argument, you will not have um, the, the the method of your runtime inside your 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 stack. So if there is a proxy check, you will not see the runtime, which is really nice. So I can answer to his question. I think it was three years ago. <laughs> but now I have the answer. And basically, this stuff needs to be used with Java EE current implementation. Basically, I have implemented this because uh, um, uh, <laughs> a mad guy wants to, uh, to, uh, to use this proxy uh, in Weld. Yes. Just to see if it's possible. Let's say like this. <laughs> the main issue is that currently it has to work with Java 7. So it's not a big deal because we haven't saved .dot. Uh, uh, define anonymous class in 1.7, almost, <laughs> not for IBM. Do you want to backport it, please? <laughs> <laughs> the only problem I have is that uh, my implementation of method builder is full of lambdas and I don't want to rewrite it. But <laughs> but I, I don't need the, the... Basically, a lambda is... A lambda object is just a proxy. And guess what? <laughs> I have a proxies li library. So it's a self, it's a self library? Yes, I can eat my own dog food. <laughs> and I have re-implemented the meta factories to use a proxy 2.0 interface. And it... In one slide! <laughs> It's not that big. <laughs> so basically, uh, I don't I don't know if uh, if you know how uh, a lambda is implemented, but basically, uh, the first time you uh, you reach a lambda, it will create a proxy. So it calls this method with the method under implementation here is the content, yes, it's the body of the, of the lambda. And bas basically, I create a proxy that will uh, use the implementation, drop the first argument because this is a proxy, and just stuff it as a constant call site. And that's all. Um, Technically, I need a, uh, I need a, uh, a as type here because of the bridge things. I can have uh, not only one uh, uh, method in a functional interface uh, from the VM point of view because you can have uh, several bridge, but that's the only, the only problem. Okay, let's see on an example how you can use it. Um, here I want to write a Java JavaScript bridge. I will not touch the natural uh, runtime. <laughs> it's just an example, uh, just a toy example. So I have uh, a code in JavaScript that define the uh, functional list just with cons and nil, just for fun. And I have two, 
two functions in this list, size and forage. And basically, I want to manipulate this functional list in Java. So I will describe using interface the uh, interface of this JavaScript code. So I have a factory. We like factory in Java. With consent nil, which correspond to the, the two methods, to the two function here, and it return a fun list with my two operations. Um, and I need some kind of uh, <laughs> weird stuff as a script object mirror is the <laughs> uh, implementation detail uh, of Nashorn. Uh, it's uh, a way to represent an object uh, in the Java world. So what I want to do is just to be able to load a JavaScript here, my fun list, um, be able to bridge it. Let's say I will take the global uh, the object corresponding to the script and see it as my factory, so I can be able to call cons or nil on it. It will return a fun list, and on a fun list, I can uh, call size or forage with a lambda. It's Java and JavaScript integration. Yes. Huh. Just, uh, um, just a demo, it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it, oh, sorry, it just in the bootstrap method, you, if you see a get, you will just uh, combine the different things, but basically what you do, you have two magic operations, one is called wrap and the other is called unwrap. And basically it transforms a JavaScript object as a proxy and it transforms a proxy as a JavaScript object. And that's all. I mean, the code is a little big, but not that ugly. So, just to finish, the code is freely available <laughs> at this GitHub things. It's a modernized version of Java Long Reflect Proxy. It uses a proxy handler as a linker, not in the middle. It supports uh, Java Long Object method and default methods. It's transparent and fast. on my own laptop, running Hello World. <laughs> no, uh, I haven't done any benchmark. I have just checked that the JIT was able to fully inline the whole things, checking the generated assembly code. Uh, as usual, you scare me very much, Remy. Uh, does anyone have questions? Uh, one, one of the other reasons that we wrote our own proxy uh, was for dynamically extending Java classes. Uh, I don't see why we couldn't extend this a bit. I mean, a, a, a class is an interface that's all default methods in a sense. So uh, that would be the next thing I'd like to be able to do with this. And then I could throw away all of my proxy generation stuff. Yeah, but uh, I have... I have chosen, actually, to not uh, inherit from a class because I want to hide the proxy and I don't want him to debug in it. <laughs> yeah, you, you do the uh, um, fold and exact invoker trick as a, as a way of Hiding, hiding what's going on inside your in your class. Um, we started doing that in our call sites in the 
early days of Java 7 because it was far faster to use an exact invoker than to use uh -huh. an uh, B invoke. Um, and it meant you could have the fallback method just take the receiver and not have to do a gather of the rest of the arguments. Yes. Um, but you, you don't tell the world. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the small world. <laughs> um, I, I haven't done any checks recently to see if, if, if this is still a major performance difference or not. Um, um, but, but it is a very good technique to do. Uh, one other thing, you did, say, you did say the problem with other proxies was it involved spinning up bytecode and doing horrible things. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're just building on their foundations with this. <laughs> yes, but one I hope is that it will be integrated in, uh, uh, in the GDK. And in that case, uh, nobody will spin <laughs> its own bytecode again. Is this on? Yeah. Looking at the the um, API of, of proxies, it seems like they they are they are provided so that you have an interface, you have Java code that you would like to to handle the invocation of that interface, and the JDK gives you sort of um, um, wraps it up, makes the makes the class. So it it to me it seems like. Uh, what people are using proxies for when they start using when they instead could be using bytecode invocation is sort of the 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 wrong thing um the the proxy interface wasn't designed really for the use case that you are using it for now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't improve it or evolve it but but this is sort of this is two slightly different things one is i have java code that i want to hook up to an interface and the other is I want to generate custom implementations of this interface, and uh, I I know how to spin bytecode. I didn't hear a question. <laughs> now, uh, I, John, you were maybe you know more about the history of of the proxy interface. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, um, so the, the proxy uh, uh, implementation was created uh, for RMI, but and and it was cool at that time that it was available for everybody. Guys, I think we have to wrap it up. It's uh, lunch hour, and uh, at one thirty, uh, if I'm correct, yes, one thirty, we're having.